global happenings today. We communicate. We analyze global news. Stay tuned. The Game of Thrones in uh, Kano still is still ongoing, but then most Nigerians need to know what the judiciary or the lawyers have to say about the issue because right now the battle is against you know the house of assembly's decision or law that they feel that they pass into law and the court order from the judiciary and who's right at this point is one of the concern of most nigerians even as the two emirs the deposed emir and the reinstated emir are waiting to take over the tumbo do right now sanusi is already in the palace and the other emir bayero is still waiting to get back his position pending the court order but interestingly the nigerian bar association how kind of branches i do speak put their voice in the ongoing issues happening in Kano State, Tinibu has received multiple warnings from diverse persons. Atiku Abubakar spoke about Idola Mas, also talked about his involvement in the Kano crisis that he should, uh, you know, shift aside so that peace will return back to Kano State. But then, let's look at what the Nigerian Bar Association have to say about this. And according to the information made available to us, the Nigerian Bar Association has voiced its concern regarding the ongoing political and legal battle following the recent repair of the Kano. Emirate Council Law of 2019. It was reported that in a statement issued by the chairman Sahi Gezawa on Saturday, the association stressed the importance of adhering to legal and constitutional processes in the handling of the Emirate dissolution and subsequent events. The NBA pointed out that the legislative and executive arm of the state government have acted within their constitutional powers, the state house of assembly to legislate, and the governor to assign to legislation. According to him, he says, once the governor ascends, it becomes law and must be implemented by state apparatus and enforced by a competent court. However, the NBA sharply criticized the deployment of military forces to enforce these legal decisions, describing it as a sad reminder of military detectorship. Gazawa clarified that the enforcement of court orders should strictly be the purview of civil authorities, as outlined in the Sharif and Civil Processes Act, not the military. The legal body detailed the proper procedure for enforcing court orders, which include notifying the individual with Form 48 and escalating to Form 49 if non compliant persists. These steps ensure due process and legal fairness fundamental to maintaining the rule of law. Gezawa's statement also included a plea to all state actors to respect their oath of office and operate within the bounds of their official duties to prevent undermining the judiciary. He expressed concern that overstepping these bounds could jeopardize the peace and security of Kano State. The statement comes amidst heightened tension following the state government decision to return Amino Addo Bayero, the 15th Emir of Kano. The former Emir and other deposed Emir were given 48 hours to vacate their palaces following the repair of the law that structure the Emirate. Wow, this is Well, this is quite interesting, I must say, coming from the uh, Bar Association, uh, the Nigerian Bar Association uh, chairman in Kano. But I remember before now, one of the most familiar things about the issue of court order was that anytime court order is issued and there is a disobedience in any form to it, especially intentional disobedience, what normally happens is that the person is fined or uh, there will be a case of him being com confined to jail for at least a period of one month or so but for those who are in political office uh, there are some changes um, but it doesn't have because they have some immunities you understand but right now with what this lawyer has said it therefore means there is a new process that must be followed he talked about from 48 and then from 49 which possibly i believe, I believe that it revolves around the issue of um you know reminder and all of that but don't forget that most nigerians have also talked about the issue of visual judgment that it is not recognized by nigerian constitution uh, the um governor had told uh, nigerians that the judge who gave that court order is not even in the country which means uh, there was no sitting anywhere or possibly there was a sitting in the high court but then he did it virtually wherever he was he said and he did that and that's why um this guy had declined but also the chairman of uh, the kanu uh, state uh, uh, Nigeria Judicial Commission or uh, sorry MBA talked about uh, the issue of everyone understanding their constitutional right. The House of Assembly passed a bill, and that bill was ascended to by the governor, which is their constitutional right. So, if that was ascended by the governor, I'm wondering how the judiciary have the power, 
you know, to go against that law, which is operational in that state. So that's where there is a lot of fighting. Ganduje had done this before now, and the heavens is now fall. So I think that this guy is going to stand his ground. But don't also forget that most Nigerians are looking at this issue from the perspective of politics. Some believe that the reason why the military are involved is not just to restore peace and order in Kano State, but it has a lot to do with, you know, uh, the Game of Thrones, That's especially the 2027 election. A lot of people are targeting Kano State, being that it is the most populous uh, state right now in Nigeria. You, you can imagine the crowd that came out when there was that tussle between Ado, Bayero, and Sanusi. The two parties have a huge crowd of young people who are supporting them. So right now, everyone seems to be looking beyond just their uh, position as Emias, but they are looking at 2027. If I put my own Emir there or restore back the law that was amended in 2019 by Ganduje, it will give me ability to at least control two or three Emirate uh, leaders, that's Emirs, and maybe the governor can control three and, you know, the federal might may control two. But, you know, the governor is looking at it from the perspective of centralized power, which is one Emir, as it was in 2000, before 2009 amendment. So it's getting really interesting right now. Uh, the question is, who is going to find the deal? The Emir, the two two Emirs, who have some people around the world, they still go around justice, that justice must be uh, considered. And But then, the Ulamas have also spoken for them. They believe that the government needs to remove their hand because if uh, peace is not allowed to transverse the parameters of Kanu State, then we should get ready for something unthinkable. And that unthinkable thing is that they may likely be unrest. With the crowd I'm seeing, that if there's an unrest, it will affect the entirety of Nigeria. Don't forget that Kano State is almost the biggest business hub in the northern part of Nigeria. A lot of things come from there. So if anything happens and uh, there is no peace there and there is war, I mean, it's going to cost Nigeria a lot. So much money will be going down the drain every day in the name of, you know, Game of Thrones. And come on, it's not worth it. I think that's why everybody seems to express their interest about it. Atiku Abubakar had already sent a warning to Bola Metinibu administration that they should stop every every ounce of wahala that they are trying to bring up. And uh, some also have sent warning, you know, to the Kano state governor that you know, he should obey court order as against the deposition of the EMEA, EMEA this thing, uh, removal. That's, that's, he should obey court order against the position of the EMEA. And that one actually came from the Kano Traders Association. And they had urged Governor Abba Yusuf to comply with the Federal High Court order restraining the Kanu state government from repelling the Kanu Emirate Court order 2019. But, you know, this is a conflict of constitutional rights, which is not good enough for, you know, the state. In their statement, they said that on behalf of the Kanu Trade Association, we urge the Kanu state government under the leadership of Governor Abba uh, you see, to respect and comply with the Federal High Court order, this is crucial to avoid causing further hardship to the people of Kano State who have already suffered. You know, we commend the judiciary and security agencies for upholding the rule of law and ensuring peace return to the state. But most people believe that all of these groups are uh, with those who have been sponsored by Ganduja. So much to talk about there. But then let's uh, discuss in our comment section the issue of you know the constitutional rights of the governor, the legislative house, and the judiciary. If the legislative house passes a bill and the the, the governor assents to it. Can the judiciary stop the use of that law in the state? That is one big question that is being talked about right now. Let's interact about it. Global happenings today.